Thank you very much, Richard, and I am delighted to be here in these new headquarters. I have been often to, I guess, the mothership in New York City, but it's good to have an outpost of the council right here down the street from the State Department. We get a lot of advice from the council, so this will mean I won't have as far to go to be told what we should be doing and how we should think about the future. Richard just gave what could be described as a mini version of my remarks in talking about the issues that confront us. But I look out at this audience filled with not only many friends and colleagues, but people who have served in prior administrations. And so there is never a time when the inbox is not full. You know, shortly before I started at the State Department, a former Secretary of State called me with this advice, don't try to do too much. And it seemed like a wise admonition, if only it were possible. But the international agenda today is unforgiving. Two wars, conflict in the Middle East, ongoing threats of violent extremism and nuclear proliferation, global recession, climate change, hunger and disease, and a widening gap between the rich and the poor. All of these challenges affect America's security and prosperity, and they all threaten global stability and progress. But they are not reason to despair about the future. The same forces that compound our problems, economic interdependence, open borders, and the speedy movement of information, capital, goods, services, and people are also part of the solution. And with more states facing common challenges, we have the chance and a profound responsibility to exercise American leadership to solve problems in concert with others. That is the heart of America's mission in the world today. Now, some see the rise of other nations and our economic troubles here at home as signs that American power has waned. Others simply don't trust us to lead. They view America as an unaccountable power, too quick to impose its will at the expense of their interests and our principles. But they are wrong. The question is not whether our nation can or should lead, but how it will lead in the 21st century. Rigid ideologies and old formulas don't apply. We need a new mindset about how America will use its power to safeguard our nation, expand shared prosperity, and help more people in more places live up to their God-given potential.